could mm -hmm. you uh, tell us a little bit about the research programs and the vision of the theology faculty here? We stand in the tradition of the past, yeah. not so much, or not only that, going back <laughs> to when this <laughs> university, but still a lot of research which is going on at this faculty is already quite research we are doing for decades. For instance, this faculty was at the forefront of studying a New Testament exegesis, the historical critical method yeah. of applying this, yeah. for instance, the question of the relationship between the Gospels. Yeah. That's something we've been doing here already quite long. Yeah. The study of church fathers like Augustine has quite a long pedigree of several decades. The study of the Vatican Council is going on for decades with important archives here. So there's, on the one hand, we stand in a tradition and we continue that. On the other hand, we preserve tradition, like since a few decades, or a few years, I should say, important holdings of rare book collections have been given to us, not only just to keep them somewhere, but also to study them. Right. That, I think that's also the, the research uh, thing, because that's making available material for further research. But apart from that, there's not only the texts, of course, there's also the ideas behind the texts. And there, a faculty radically chooses for what we call a hermeneutical approach. This means that we see the Christian faith as something you study in relationship with its context. And so, this is, I think, the tension of our research. Tradition, the past and the present, what we're doing here and the context. Um, Johan, uh, yeah. you, you do have uh, several research centra in, uh, in this faculty. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, not only one, but, uh, but many. Uh, like ecumenical center, like mm -hmm. uh, um, a historical uh, center, like study of Vatican II, uh, like biblical center. How, how is it all organized? How, what is the working mechanism of uh, of, uh, uh, of those centra? Well, I'm happy to tell you, Victor, that I don't have to be in charge of all these centra <laughs> myself. <laughs> so <laughs> there are very able colleagues yeah. who are specialists in that specific area, like, pro for instance, my colleague, Professor De May, he's heading the Center of Ecumenical Studies, Professor Bouve, our dean, who's in charge of the Center for Postmodern Theology. Yeah. So there's a lot of diversity in how these centra are organized and how they, they, um, they function. Some are small centra attached to one research unit, church history for instance. Yeah. Other are certainly interdisciplinary, like the Center for the Study of the Second Vatican Council. So it's difficult to say that is what the research center yeah. is. You could, to put it simply, you could say the research center are each worked, are each organized in the way they work best. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit uh, a sober Flemish attitude which we <laughs> take, <laughs> which we apply here. <laughs> One of the best important uh, priorities in, in the research is of course creating the experts in research, which usually <coughs> begins on the level of the doctorate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also do know that, uh, that it is a very hard uh, thing to organize. Mm -hmm. And especially that uh, the doctorate student, students that they are, they are often thrown on their own. How have you managed to encourage this, uh, this loneliness uh, in the research which can really produce something of great value? I think, first of all, the relationship between an individual student and his or her promoter is extremely precious. When it comes <coughs> to guiding an individual student, you need this one-to-one -one relationship, or maybe if a co-promoter is necessary, the one 
to a relationship. I think that's vital. Yeah. But at the other hand, we would do, I feel, a not good enough job if at the end the dissertation would be the only outcome. I think we would like to form our doctoral students that they, in such a way that they are ready yeah. after the doctorate to do something else. Most of our doctoral students, they will not be able to teach as a specialist in their very specific, narrow um, area of expertise. So we have to form them both on the level of knowledge and on the level of, ex of skills. Very important is also that they learn to communicate their research to one another, that they discuss it with one another. So therefore, most of our professors have research groups which bring together their doctoral students. And often, it's very interesting to see that often <coughs> doctoral students are criticizing one's other's work much more severely than a promoter would dare <laughs> to do. <laughs> so, and so, but it works all very well and it's, it makes them enthusiastic for, for research. And, and, and that's what we would like to, to instill in them. Like research, it's to do something creative. It's like to go where no one has gone before as the Star Trek. Well, so there is the, there is the, the promoter-student relationship, there is the research group level, mm -hmm. and then there is also the level of the faculty itself, of course, where we offer training in aspects that transcend what an individual promoter can like. And also the university is offering a lot courses, academic English for instance. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I think the, the combination of all these things together makes for a very strong research environment. The fact that this is an international faculty also helps very much because what is self-evident for one student isn't for another and vice yeah, versa. Yeah, yeah. And that's opening up a lot of things. You do mm. have a lot of um, international students. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, uh, a half of your faculty are. Uh, mm. And it is the case both uh, on the uh, undergraduate, graduate and postgraduate level. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you manage to run this all international group on the research level? Well, of course, everybody there has his or her role to play, like our postdocs. They are really the bridge already between, say, the seniors, senior professors and doctoral students. So they often are already partners in running a research group, which is for them an important exercise, Indeed. an important skill. The, the doctoral students themselves often are happy that besides a senior promoter, they also have postdocs to turn to. So in, in that sense, you, you have an environment which works because it's dynamic across existing groups, like also across research units. Do you think that the uh, research into theolo theology is uh, thriving or it is experien experiencing uh, certain difficulties these days? So I think we, we shouldn't deny that nowadays studying theology, at least here in the West, yeah. say in Western Europe, is less obvious, certainly for 18 years old. So there, but when people grow a bit older, you see, usually there's more interest yeah. there. Um, so on the research level, I think, of course, the like, the confessional elements doesn't make it easy. 30 years ago, at, here in Western Europe, it was much more accepted right. to do research in theology. We see that in funding agencies, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now we have to fight much more that it is plausible mm -hmm. to do theology, that yeah. something like theology can be a science, yeah. can be scholarship. Some, we have to fight harder yeah. to, to convince people from that. But at the same time, in this situation, yeah. 
there's also a beautiful challenge. It is. Because it makes you rethink what you're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, theology, I think, is always at its best when that dialogue between theology and the context is at its best. Yeah. That's yeah. when somebody like Thomas Aquinas flourished <laughs> because he did exactly that. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's what we have to do and hope hope for the best, like Thomas couldn't foresee no. that his theology <laughs> would, would be so influential. So I think theology, in a way, is also of active hope. Yeah. Yeah. Like now it's a bit harder, yeah. here in Western Europe at least, but yeah. there are chances, yeah. I'm certain. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much um, confident, confident there. Optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Um, Johan, um, you mm. just mentioned about the sort of financial aspect. Um, mm -hmm. um, how is it organized in Leuven uh, and uh, what are the advantages, what are the difficulties you, uh, you found that uh, the experience is? Until now, we are very happy that, for instance, this library also is able to attract enough funding to, to keep it as yeah. it is, which is, I think, precious. Also, we still manage to attract for our very best students yeah. funding and for uh, our very good to good students yeah. also funding to, to do their research. Yeah. But again, it's, it's struggling. It's, and, and in a way, it's not yeah. bad yeah. that there had never has been a time that the money was growing on our back. <laughs> so, so I'm writing many letters of recommendation every year, and I'm happy to do so. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe, now that I come to think about it, what also makes this place, Leuven, yeah. here for theology so unique, is that as a faculty, we stand shoulder to shoulder to, to face this challenge, yeah. to help each other, to attract funding. Very often somebody tells me, hey, but have you already seen that student? Yeah. He's good, eh? Yeah. Or I would say to a colleague, hey, that student, he did well yeah. at my exam. I see it. So, and so we, there is that kind of little support every day which, yeah, and, and that's very important for the team spirit and that keeps you going also, well, to try to get funding again for this or this student. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah, in a way you see uh, quite happy vice dean of research <laughs> who is yeah, yeah. well aware of the challenges, You're right. but also of what he can build on. Absolutely. Because I've inherited a lot yeah. from my predecessors, yeah, you've for which I'm very grateful. Yeah, you have. Do you see a future to the research doing together with some, perhaps, Russian experts in, uh, in Greek patristics or in other fields of theology, which could be break fruits for all Christian Christians in, in the world of academia? I think that kind of joint research is, I would almost say, a duty and a pleasure. And for me, it's again that idea of being on the road. For me, the doing things together and the research as such would be at least, and the conversation as such, at first would be important yeah. and and gradually maybe after many years there will be a connection and yeah so then after some time it will be clear where mutual interests can be fruitful and can bring research forward so but this is something yeah you have well, you know how it is, you can put two brilliant minds 
together in the same room and nothing can happen. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so it's, this is, there is also on research, there is an, it's some, something unpredictable also. So it, it has to grow. Yeah. It has to grow and whether, whether it are, I understand your question, but for me, whether it are Russian people or people from the Philippines yeah. or is, is less important. Is less important, but that the conversation goes on. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. I think, well, you're now here. Um, I mean, we live in a global world and this could in in the future this will whether we like it or not influence not only the content yeah. of how we, of our theology how we look to theology it will also influence the way we do it yeah. so that will not yeah in 2003 i published a book together with uh, a Leuven colleague and two australian scholars now we are almost 10 years later. Skype is ubiquitous. So I think the collaboration possibilities are it's are very very high. It's a matter of calendars, feasibility and but the realistic options are there. Yeah. Johan, thank you so much mm. for your precious time. Mm -hmm. your insights that uh, I think it will be quite a revelation to the people in our yeah. country. Thank you. And